involved the rest of the cluster or is there any committee in the thought process sooner? Okay. Uh, but I really wanted to address the appointment issue. Okay. Anyone else? Mandy? I think that's a good one to look at. Um, I actually have some other things I think we thought, I think we might have missed in the appointments issue. Um, town Council appoints our own JCPC members and BCG members. Mm -hmm. It's not a presidential appointment. And so we left, I think, yeah. out where that sits. So as we get back to this in, in a couple weeks, that's something right. we probably need to figure out where to put that into. Okay. Um, it might also be good to reconsider the number of members on JCPC, um, town council members, and maybe up it to four. I know that's been a conversation in and out over the course of the last year. Um, but in terms of the how do we notify other counselors of changes? Um, uh, ideas. ideas, right, yeah. So I guess one of the things I thought very odd about the conversation at the council meeting was the the some counselors um, implication or impression or you know suggestion that we as a council committee had no right to recommend the dissolution of a committee without that committee's assent. Um, I, maybe I interpreted the comments wrong, um, but our committee has been tasked with organization and if this committee deems it necessary to eliminate a committee or, or recommend that right sorry yeah deems it necessary to make their recommendation right all we were doing was recommending that I think that 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 recommendation actually does belong first conversation after we make that recommendation in the full council not in the specific committee we're recommending deleting because that cuts out the whole council to that and says well we're prioritizing you so I had some problem with this you know this Im impression that I received and like I said maybe I was receiving it wrong that we did something wrong by not going to the committees to let them vote on our recommendation before bringing it to the whole council. <laughs> so I, yeah, no, no, I know, you know, I know, but so I don't, I don't know what, what you were saying was how do we get them more notice, right? Um, because we did have a lot of people saying, whoa, we didn't know this was coming. And all I was thinking was, well, two weeks ago at our December meeting, it was in a report and, right, and George talked about it at the committee reports verbally. And so how did you not know? You know so I, I get that part, but, but I wanted to point out that I did not necessarily agree with, and I thought that was probably incorrect to say, to, to go that step further that I thought some counselors were recommending, including not just the elimination of a committee, that that committee has to see it, but it was also, I think there was one that said, um, well, a different committee that was being split needed to have a vote on whether it was good to split it before the council sees that, and I don't see that as appropriate. No, I agree with you. Uh, so, I mean, I, I feel like, uh, I'm not turning this thing on. Um, at one point I asked Evan, and George, whether Sarah knew because I knew uh, about the change because I hadn't heard anything from her about it, uh, and it turned out she didn't know. Now that she has a responsibility as a counselor, I have a responsibility as a counselor to read what's coming out and to you know take notes during meetings and stuff so that I do know what's going on. As much as it's being revealed. So and I felt strongly that I needed to defend us as a committee on a couple of different levels because I, it, you know, um, okay. but I, I think that if we realize mm -hmm. that there are people who don't read things or who are absent, particularly if their committee is being impacted, maybe we do have a okay. next step. You know, maybe we, even if it was just reporting to uh, OPA and report, no, not to other people. <laughs> okay. But, you know, um, or to CRC. These are things we're thinking about. To let, you know, because I don't, I spent a, a lot of the last couple of weeks getting a lot of uh, pushback about different things, a lot of 
poison about how things were happening in the town, and I am really sick of all that. I am, so I want us to be as clear as we can be mm -hmm. that we are talking and, and making our recommendations okay. that we have communicated with the council. So okay. um, it's your own committee so that we don't get attacked for doing what I think is a really good thing. Okay. Which is really Because I, I will proceed just quickly with the question of how you think we should proceed with this whole process. Um, and how, given that I get a sense from, from all of you that you think this is important, uh, we're not in a rush, at least I'm not in a rush, though time is a wasting. Uh, we don't meet again until, what is it, January 29th or some, right? Um, and um, any thoughts about how we could, for instance, some of this could be done piecemeal. In fact, I think if anything does get done, it most likely will be done piecemeal. It's but again, that's open to discussion. Um, it's unlikely we'll do a wholesale reorganization in one fell swoop. Um, I still think it's important that the council wrestle with this. Another suggestion is a retreat. Is this something that would be better handled um, Obviously, there's a proposal out there. It could be slightly refined. We could work on that a little bit um, before the retreat, if such a retreat. Is this something better suited for a retreat with a concrete set of proposals uh, in front of the council to, to wrestle with? Or um, I guess my question is, how do you think we should proceed? One possibility is it's just on hold. We're not going to do anything with it, obviously, today. And we're not meeting again until January 29th. Um, do you have instructions for me as to things I could do uh, or the committee could do in the interim, or is this just on hold? I would like us to make a recommendation to the council to put the audit committee in finance so that Randy Kelsey <laughs> and Dorothy and I don't have to uh, so that, have uh, an extra meeting, an extra couple of meetings for something that is very clear, very simple, and thoughtful. Okay, Mandy? So one of the things I was thinking is. I'm not sure much of this can be done piecemeal. I don't think you can touch CRC, OCA, and GOL piecemeal. in a piecemeal sure. manner. Right. I just don't see how you can. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a possibility to touch finance in a piecemeal manner with that audit recommendation, but also include the sort of related changes or potential related changes to JCPC and maybe BCG. Um, JCPC has some related changes because of some things we were removing from the finance charge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that group could okay. be done one way. Mm -hmm. We could split it in two. And then everything else done another way. Right. The everything else, depending on what happens with appointments, maybe might end up actually remodifying a finance um, committee depending on, because you could potentially see, based on what Sarah said, um, if we do go that route, putting the finance appointments in finance, I'll know, um, but you know, depending on what you do that, but we could make that, the question is, should we make that recommendation for the 27th at this meeting and say, this is what we want to go forward with on the 27th because um, really that's not where we heard any concern. And so, you know, not wait for comments to come in on those, on, or go with mm -hmm. just the, those proposals, and if we have others, bring them back with the rest of the group too, and so maybe end up doing two finance committee modifications or something, or two JCPC, depending on what we go with. Because um, we could certainly just go with the finance committee and dis dissolution of audit without dealing with the rest of them and bring the rest back, the rest of the changes, including any potential other finance committee changes. So help me with the process here. What, what would we as a committee need to do just in order to move forward with the um, putting audit into finance? Do we need to make any formal, do we simply need to get something on the agenda? I, this is just a process question to which I simply don't have the answer because I'm ignorant. Um, what would this committee need to do, if anything, to at least forward that modest goal? Does it require simply something on the agenda? Does it require a vote by this committee? 
does it require yet more discussion by the council? Um, would this, uh, since we've had a quote unquote first reading, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Anyone have any thought? I mean, I'm looking to you, Mandy, again. Yeah. But well, I, I was just going back to my notes from the last meeting. We haven't actually, as a committee, voted on what we put forth yes. on exactly. the 6th. Exactly. So yeah. I think if we were actually going to seek council action on the 27th, we should vote today on something um, so that there is a recommendation from this committee. And I guess that vote could be as narrow as we recommend audit be dissolved and um, moved, you know, its responsibilities moved into the finance committee. And, you know, we could, I guess, vote technically on the charge as it looks, um, but it could be as simple as that. Would it involve, it would, wouldn't it also have to involve the charge um, or not? Um, yeah. Right, exactly. So we'd have to do two things. We'd have to adopt a revision to the charge and we'd have to then agree that we want to uh, send this on to the council for action. That specific, um, and are we, can we do that today? Is that possible? I ask. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we could potentially adopt the revised charge as presented to the council on January 6th, that, that specific revised proposed charge. Okay, and I believe I heard Councilor, Sh um, I heard Andy say something ab about a concern he had with the finance charge. Am I the only one who heard that uh, in the course of discussion? He mentioned something briefly. Um, so we haven't heard back from him about that. Um, and maybe I misheard him, because I seem to be the only one who heard this comment. My recollection of that was not that he had an issue with yeah. the finance charge, yes. Yes. but he had an issue with some of the, um, in here, this like chart. Oh, right. Some of yeah. the areas. Yeah, that's that, sure. that, okay. that was how I heard it. It was okay. not the charge, but some of this where he thought things were mislabeled. And it, if, if we're on the agenda and as a, for something for the council to deal with, he could make an amendment or whatever. He could, mm -hmm. he could uh, act on that at the time yeah. if he had concern. Uh, so we, I'm sorry, ma'am. One of my notes is that it's concern on the finance, com finance charge feels something is missing. Uh, and so if he does feel something, but, but that's as far as he went. Right, exactly, right. <laughs> and, and then he talked mainly about how the, the split charts, the, the Excel sheet. Um, so I don't know. So if we make a, but a, if we made right. a recommendation and he actually thinks something's missing, he could come through to the council meeting with that, that proposed proposal. change. Okay. And again, it would be appropriate for me to forward to him um, or just alert him to this to this fact so that he has a chance to think about it. That's not a violation of any. Okay. So I'm open to uh, doing this. Um, I hear that Pat would like it. The audit committee seems to be uh, happy with the thought of being dissolved. Um, so um, can someone construct a motion um, to that effect so that we could... Um, Okay, so you're doing two things that you're you're doing two things at once. I, I apologize. I have trouble doing one thing at once, but anyway, that's okay. Um, that's all right. I'm, I'm I can. We can have a moment of silence, a moment of peaceful quiet. No, no, Mandy is working on the motion, I'm working up and language. I think it is important that we do this. Uh, for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, we actually would be taking a small step toward what we think is an important goal of reorganization. And given the schedule, if we wait, it just pushes things even further down the road. Um, I don't know if it's possible for us, um, I'm just talking here, but to deal with JCPC, um, but you'd also mentioned those two is that something that we can tackle now? But let's deal with one thing. One, I first. think we could avoid the JCPC for now okay. because the JCPC already had some language and it actually conflicted with the finance committee charge um, okay. in terms of its language onto who could be members. And so it would be updating that one to actually 
adopt the finance committee language, but okay. if we're looking at changing, but, but right now it, paint, we're not right. in violation of that charge given its language. Okay. And I think that was the only change to the JCPC charge, right? It was needed. And but, was there yeah. one other you mentioned that also needs attention? Uh, JCPC well, I said JCPC and BCG, BCG um, appointments yeah. because the council, not the pre right. council the president, is yes. the appointing right. authority. That so I, that, that yeah. would be in GOL or wherever we right. that, deal with that's appointments. Us. That's us. Okay. So I, I have some potential language. All right, good. If you'd be willing to uh, make that motion and read that, that would um, be great. Move to recommend the town council dissolve audit committee, move its responsibilities to the finance committee and adopt the revised finance charge as presented at the January 6th, 2020 council meeting. So we have a motion. Is the motion clear? Do you need it repeated? Because I can have Mandy repeat it. I think you got it, thank you. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm waiting for Evan to do something. That's all right, I just need a second. You're the um, chair. You I figured it, it would be <laughs> symbolic if you seconded it. Okay, so we have a motion <laughs> and, it's been, it, and it's been seconded. It. <laughs> all right, any further discussion of this motion? I see no uh, expression of desire to speak further, so I'm gonna call the question. All those who uh, are in favor of the motion, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 I see a unanimous decision. So it is 5-0 um, unanimous for this motion. Thank you, that's great. Um, just quickly going forward beyond this, is there anything you would like me as? <laughs> All right. He's, he's no longer on our committee. <laughs> anything you want me to do or anything you think that the committee could do in the interim to, I've heard the thought of reaching out. So for instance, I'd be perfectly comfortable um, reaching out sort of on my agenda this month anyway, because it's a new year, to do my usual sort of round of, you know, hello here. Uh, do you want, I can do that. Um, Pat. Yeah, so is a critical one. Okay. Um, and I also, and so to me, I would like us to move forward today to clarify what we're doing and bring it to council. Um, I'd like to clarify the appointments issue as much as we can. Um, I think putting all appointments in GOL and making us all is just going to feed a lot of nonsense that's out there. Sure. No, I, um, I don't have a problem. And so yeah. Sarah's trying to. Yeah. I, I like don't it. want to back away from this. Okay. I really don't. I'll say the one comment I've gotten so far, and there's only one comment, is that um, this counselor would prefer that this be done at a retreat. Um, but that's the only comment I've gotten. That doesn't mean we can't proceed and with uh, you know fashioning or making a recommendation. Um, but that's the only comment I've received so far. Mandy. So. I would just say, given that the meeting was Monday night, um, I'm not necessarily comfortable with finalizing all recommendations today yeah. because I'd like to give counselors, mm -hmm. since that conversation just on strong. Monday night was really shortened too because of time restraints, right. um, I don't feel like we got a full level of feedback, so I would like to give the counselors opportunity to get that feedback to the chair um, before we delve into even the discussion we yeah. heard. Um, I probably would oppose doing it at a retreat um, yeah. because you, you oppose, I, yeah. I believe it sits firmly within this committee to come up with a proposal and propose it to the council. Yep. Um, and then okay. the council okay. should discuss it at a regular meeting. Right on. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if there's a role for us individually to, um, with open meeting law, seriously, I'm taking it obviously seriously, um, to do a little uh, outreach. 
Is that appropriate, inappropriate, um, Mandy? So we can only go to one more person between us because there's five of us so and it's, one it's more is number six and the council one. will be it's voting. It's not me speaking to four or five people or you speaking to four or five people. It's, it's and the minute you and I talk then we violate it. Well, we'll never speak again. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I, so I would be hesitant to, okay, to that's fine. do that's that. Why I asked. Um, okay, so we can't really uh, do much. It's really now. Um, okay, all right. Is there anything that the chair can do in the interim? Remind people to actually give us feedback? Good, so, <laughs> no, that's a good point, that in a week or two, if I still haven't heard, just to remind people. Fair enough. So the main thing at this point is to get feedback that we could then use at our next meeting, and what I'm hearing is a, a desire to um, proceed and to fi formalize, or finalize and formalize a genuine proposal dealing with uh, the larger piece and to do it all at once. Um, and I'm, okay, that sounds good to me. All right. Um, I, yes, Evan. And we should probably add on to that discussion about um, what was said from Kathy about thinking about the re requirements of membership for JCPC. Yeah, Mandy Joe mentioned perhaps adding a fourth member, but there was also um, not just JCPC, but all of them. There were also some. We, we made some comments about how you know the one member who sits on participatory budgeting has to be from finance. A maximum number. It seemed like uh, mm -hmm. Kathy wanted that discussion reopened. So it seems like we should talk about it before it goes into council. Okay. So at the next meeting, um, that issue. Okay. Membership. Okay. I just want to bring up one other thing. Um, I don't recommend this for the next meeting because. Mm -hmm. But um, if the reorganization passes, the rules themselves list what our standing committees are. Um, so be a whole lot of we should yeah. go back and right. Right. present that those modifications soon after whatever passes, passes, but as one fell swoop. So I wouldn't recommend if finance and audit pass to go and do those solely before doing the rest, but we should keep in mind that that's going to need to be a follow-up. Okay. okay. Oh, you can hear me. Uh, do we have a rec or think we need to make a recommendation about um, committee membership or anything like that? Or you mean as far as the individuals? Or changing? Or I'm or sorry, I'm not being clear. Of whether you know, we've had a year. I would like to stay on the committees that I'm on because I feel like I'm still learning so much. But uh, do we want to look at? changes because there are lots of complaints about I didn't get this and this. Well, I think that that's really an conspiracy. issue for the president. I mean, once we decide what, uh, my sense is once we as a, a body, as a council decide this is the structure we want going forward, however we decide it, then it goes back to the president to make appointments. And I think uh, my experience has been that she does listen and tries to you know, make, but that's an issue between the president and individual counselors, it seems to me. I don't, I don't think this committee should be making any uh, recommendations about who should be on what no, body. No, no, not to, but whether or not we should be changing membership. Well, that again, yeah, yeah I think it's the president's it. call, yeah. yeah. Um, I think membership will change, that's just my personal opinion. Um, it yeah, um, though I, I agree with you, Pat, that I don't feel like I'm just learning, so the thought of trying, but that's the, the nature of the beast, I guess. Well, good, I think that's, thank you. Um, the next item is a, a sizable one. Um, I would like to give it a fair amount of time, but I'm open to uh, your thoughts on it. Um, I have told the council president and the council, for that matter, that, that we are working on creating a public uh, process for public ways requests which require town council approval. Um, now, that's not quite true because we really haven't started working on it, um, but you have had it in your packet you've had a chance, at least in theory, to look at it and think about it. Um, I was hoping that today we could uh, spend a good 45 minutes to an hour, no more, because we have obviously other things we have to do um, to try and hammer something out. Um, I really need your help here. Uh, obviously, I've done some homework and talked to some people. I've put something out there as a draft. Um, it needs a lot of a, a work, I think. Um, but my, my dream is that we can come back on the uh, 29th 
um, and say, here's what we propose as a process for uh, public ways requests which require town council approval. That's my hope. So first of all, are you willing to take this on for the next 45 minutes or more? Are you uh, uh, ready to do that? Um, and if so, I'd like us to, uh, to turn to that issue. Um, you have in your, your packets um, my memo, call it what you will, my document, that um, first of all lays out what I understand to be the five governing, and there are at least five, there are probably more, um, laws, charter, bylaws, policies, rules of procedure that deal with this. And um, in so far as I'm missing anything, um, it should be added. So if you see something that's missing in the course of our discussion, because it does seem to me that it'd be important in stating the process that we, as we have in the past, I think, very well, stated clearly what the uh, various uh, governing bylaws, policies, et cetera, are. And here I have what I understand to be the five. Um, okay. Um, I had a couple of questions in this document that were just sort of just that I had in my head, um, but the, the meat of it is, uh, I conceive, to be the actual process, trying to imagine step one, step two, step three, step four, et cetera, and um, that's what I laid out in this memo, and at the very end, I have actually put in um, the bylaw 3.14, which concerns parking and delivery. Um, I think there are also some other things in the packet that might be of use to you. So, um, first question in terms of the various um, charter bylaw and town policy, et cetera, is there anything missing that anyone notices? Secondly, um, not hearing anything, um, I had some series of questions, some of which I think I've gotten answers to, but you might have other questions about this whole issue. Um, the very first one had to deal with, it, th there are different kinds of, uh, of, of public ways requests that come to us. Uh, the example of Archipelago had to deal with Spring Street and the issue of the, of the parking. Um, that didn't, we didn't do anything that just came to us, right? Um, didn't involve, right? It yeah. was a condition of the planning board right. permit that right. they come to us. Right. So, um, and we followed a process for that, right? Working on it. Right, so maybe that, again, so what we're doing here, we then define that. Um, Eversource came to us for something on the common, and we, again, assumed that would fall into this category. And that, um, I believe, is governed by MGL, is that correct? Um, and that has its own set of somewhat onerous requirements. Um, and then there's the example that obviously is on my mind and on the minds of some of us, which is one can, you know, here's a group of, of, of uh, residents who want to change the parking on their street. And uh, in part, that's what's driving this, but what, um, Lynn has asked is that we come up with a process for the whole thing rather than just for this one particular issue. And I said, fine, so that's what we're trying to do. Um, this seems to be working fine, generally speaking. Um, but so we don't, I don't want to, I don't think we want to uh, make any major changes to the way the town has been dealing with this. But we do, I think, have a, a just a, a, a clear question of what is the process? Can we spell it out? Um, and then finally, what triggers it? Um, can anything? Um, tri I mean, what, what's, the, what's the barrier for, uh, you know, if one person wants to change the parking on their street, or one person wants to have a speed limit changed or whatever, that, that doesn't necessarily trigger anything, right? So what is it that gets this process started? Some of it's, I take it, determined by Mass General Law, or in the case of Spring Street by the Planning Board, we don't have anything to do with it. Um, that's just what the what has to be done. Um, so, what triggers uh, this? Okay. And then there's the, the the suggested process. So, how do people want to deal with this, or do they want to deal with it? 
Ma'am? That's all right. That, it's, um, we could take it step by step um, in terms of the, imagine, you know, any process would involve this first step. Obviously, the petition comes to the council in whatever form it comes, whether it comes um, from the town manager, um, whatever. Um, Um, in general, uh, the process that you suggested sounded logical, um, but I did not like the formal petition requirement. And sure. I really didn't like the referral to the group petition. Um, mm -hmm. The group petition in the charter requires a lot of specific things. First, it requires 150 voters certified by the Board of Registrars for it to qualify as a group petition. Right. Now you think of a small street, Lincoln's a little bigger, but think of like Kendrick Place off of Route 9 that only has eight houses or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be really hard for them to get up to 150 voters if they wanna change parking on their street. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure they should have to get up to that. Um, so I didn't, and, and then there's there's all sorts of hearing requirements and all, all you know, and I'm, I'm not sure reading the statutory, you know, the, the bylaw language on parking in 3.14 that um, this type of parking change, the Lincoln Avenue one might actually apply. Um, the Spring Street one, I'm not sure applies to, that 3.14 applies mm -hmm. where our hearing is required because um, it talks about regulations governing location, time, and duration, or cost, you know, or fees. Um, so Lincoln Avenue probably applies because that would regulate the time of parking allowed, but Spring Street isn't looking to regulate the time. It's mm. more of like where things are. So, but maybe it applies. Um, mm. But mm. I do think there needs to be some clear way of figuring out who, you know, of when a resident wants a parking change or, you know, a speed hump. Um, mm -hmm. Is one resident's request to the council enough to start triggering a process or do you need more or, or do they not make it to the council at all? Maybe they make it to the town staff, a specific staff member, but then the council might not ever know about it and it could get killed in staff for a variety of reasons that the council may not agree with and we are ultimately the keeper of the public way, not right. town staff. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, this one, so I liked some sort of notice to the council of all requests or all thoughts, um, but I'm not sure that should be the driving force. I just don't know where to go with, does it come to us first or do you s assign a staff member to receive those notices and, yeah, and then that staff member reports to us what they've gotten requested and then we can make decisions as to whether it, you know, rises to the level of needing a committee referral so that the council can deal with it or leave it to the staff to deal with. and. Um, where we have had complaints about parking on uh, in Echo Hill on one of the sort of ears and Echo Hill and um, the um, uh, officer Contardi, Rita Contardo I may not have her last name correct and John Thompson have all been out there they, you know, and they're, but they are, they're not clear what the next steps would be. And so um, this resident wants to know from us what has to happen. Uh, I also, um, while this particular incident, incident uh, this example is one that needs to be addressed uh, probably simply by signage that says parking one side, blah, blah, mm -hmm. and then they could be ticketed. Um, I don't think all resident requests are reasonable. And I don't know, um, so I, I think that there needs to be a high bar for us what to create a public yeah. hearing 
to address changes, real changes. So okay. I don't know. High bar. Okay. What if it you required a counselor sponsor? In other words, the way that it would move forward is that a counselor uh, is willing to uh, sponsor it or bring it to the attention of the counselor. So that, I mean, that's why I put in the group petition and all the rest of it only because I thought, well, you know, if you find that you have a concern and no counselor is willing to act on it and uh, the town is not uh, prepared to bring it to the council by the town manager, um, then this would be, I guess, your only alternative. Um, and good luck with that. I think Mandy's right. In many cases, it would be a bar that most people couldn't. But if you had a counselor, so I say in your case, um, the situation is such that you feel this rises to the level of where the council needs to uh, address it, would that solve this problem? Just like we do it with proclamations and so on, we, we insist that there be a council sponsor um, and we, we hope that that's not going to be too onerous, but we do insist. So I, could we insist here? It, it puts individual counselors, uh, when a request is frivolous, uh, it puts them um, <laughs> at odds with their constituent, right. um, and yeah. or they bring something frivolous to the council. So uh, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Um, Steve? Yeah, so... Parking is a really tricky thing because it's like, if we think of it like a watershed, right? So I might want the stream stopped, you know, that runs across my property or whatever, but that means that everyone else will get flooded or or, mm -hmm. or it might mean, there might be somebody downstream of me whose crops will die because, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I guess in an ideal world, we would be getting direction from the executive branch, you know, the executive branch would have an aerial perspective on, all, and, and I think we are to a certain degree, um, but the executive branch would have this aerial perspective on what all these requests are and their own observations, like where are the greatest number of tickets written or where are the greatest obstructions or, and then they would come to us. But I get really concerned about so one of the emails that came through was on my own street, and I happened to completely disagree with everything that was written about my own street. Mm -hmm. But so mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really don't know. But I don't think that. So then you have the problem of districts, right? So we have some people that are districts, and so someone in our district might want something to happen, but that will might cause another problem in a different district or town wide. This is not necessarily going to help, but um, I get complaints of, I mean, District 2 runs on the whole east side of Amherst. We kind of cover every kind of neighborhood you could imagine. Um, and there are real feelings that different parts of town are tr really treated differently. Um, like Lincoln will get taken care of sure. before issues on Stanley and sure. stuff like that. Sure. And that's something we also need to look at, and it doesn't quite fit in with what we're talking about, but how do we address some kind of equity in, you know, that's why I like your idea of a list of where are the most problems, um, where, you know, where are the reported problems, because that gives us something uh, fairly concrete to look at instead of just, okay, this is a really good organization of, uh, neighbors and so they're going to get what they want. Mandy? So what if we use the automatic referral option? You know, I, you know, in, in looking at the suggested process, there's, right now I feel like the problem is no one knows how to actually get it in front of the council unless the town staff supports it. Mm -hmm. um, and so what if we take your idea of a group petition but not do the group petition, have, right. you know, no, like, like that, right? um, mm -hmm. a form of some sort that could be filled out that says, I am looking for this public way change um, with an idea of what that change is and when that form is filed with the town, you know, with the clerk of the council, say, um, that that clerk is authorized to automatically forward that request to whatever appropriate committee. Right now that would in theory be CRC <laughs> council committee, but right. depending on what happens, it might end up at TSO um, or whatever its right. name becomes. Um, 
And that committee takes an initial, that's five counselors taking an initial first look that says, this is worthy of further consideration. This is not worthy, it's only one, you know, can, can do that sort of first counselor review of logicalness or frivolousness or any of that. A very basic review, not a full hearing on is it good or not, but is this worth more research, more investigation, more town staff time put into it, mm -hmm. and more counselor time put into it. Um, and then could come back to the council with a recommendation in a report that says, we're gonna hold it to see if anyone else has, issue, you know, if we get more, we think it's important enough to rise to the level of sending it off to the town staff and TAC or whoever to actually look at it. Or you know what, we're not, we, we recommend we just essentially throw it in the trash bin. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and tell the person that made that petition or, mm -hmm. or no. complaint that we don't, you know, no, 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 get back to them and say, mm -hmm. this, this is just not something we believe mm -hmm. is worthy of consideration right now. Um, and then, depending on what happens at the council level from that, then you can sort of start with, then you're at sort of the four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, but, but you're, the council's on, are we ready for a public hearing? Probably not. But that can be the referral to whoever's appropriate potentially back to the council committee or not. Um, and then it comes back and goes through sort of that public hearing process, the regular committee process of referral once you've got town recommendations or other committee recommendations and then sort of, you know, I don't know whether this is the right order or something, but then it goes into it, but it's at least not, that it, the council itself has had some sort of say in whether it moves forward or not. And that might give clarity to the residents of what to do. Mm -hmm. These requests um, will almost always come to town hall in some fashion, I assume. Now, obviously, somebody can complain to their um, counselor. And the counselor could say, well, take it to town hall. Tell, to write out what you want and what you're asking. Um, a town hall would mean what? Would it mean? Um, well, if it were the town clerk, probably. Well, then, uh, then there are things, because I think it needs to come into a council, and the counselor needs to know what they're supposed to do. You, you don't, I wouldn't want to tell the residents, oh, here's what you do. You know, I would say, yes, here's what you do, and I'm going to contact this office as well, so that, um, so we need to have a point person or space in the committee to hear something that this is going to. And that, that's also a way to generate statistics and evaluate what's happening across town in terms of uh, equity and other things. I'm thinking of my examples. Um, Spring Street, the Eversource on the Common, these sorts of things are done, um, don't involve us at all, and they are negotiating or dealing with specific folks that they deal with all the time, and then it comes to us via the town manager and is put on our agenda. Um, and I don't see that, that we are going to try to um, change that process or have anything to do with it, right? So what we are trying to construct in parallel with this, but is essentially any kind of public ways request that, um, how do you want to put it? Um, basically, is it constituent driven, um, local district type issue? Is that really, what, I mean, I'm just trying to get a sense of what, because there are a whole bunch of things that we have nothing to do with and they get to us and we deal with them and we're not trying to have touch that at all. I think it's the constituent resident driven ones where they're frustrated mm -hmm. and they want some action and we as the council are the final body but no one knows from the resident driven perspective how to get it to the council. Right. And you know they've been getting, my understanding is they've been getting frustrated by going to town staff and not necessarily and having staff make a decision as to whether to bring it to the council or not 
without their involvement and they want their day in court, essentially right. in front yeah. of the council, um, right. without always having to rely on someone in staff supporting it. And so this way, some way to get it in front of the council to then have the council say, hey staff, we want to report on this. Right. That report might be, we don't recommend it, but then it's at least council driven for the final permanent public way. So the very first stage where someone decides that this falls under the uh, authority of the council as keepers of the public way, um, who is it who makes that decision and do they have clear enough guidance uh, to make that decision correctly in every case? Because the gatekeeper will be crucial. Um, and we want to be able to tell our constituents, this is where you go, this is what you should bring, and um, assuming that it is in fact something that falls within the authority of the council, then we're going to create a process for what it will then will transpire and we'll tell them what that process is. But I guess my first and initial question is, who is it that gets the initial request and how does he or she um, decide whether this is something the council um, must be alerted to? And I, I just don't, in my own mind right now, I don't have a clear sense. Um, other than one could say, you know, trust staff, um, you know, uh, but that puts the burden on them. And if there's a problem, then, you know, they're left holding the bag. And what you really want is a process where there is no real, um, you know, it should be pretty clear whether this is something the council deals with or not, whether it fits the description of, of a public ways request that requires town council action. And then it's just a matter of, of passing that. You know, I assume it would go to the clerk. The clerk then would uh, notify, if I understand Mandy, um, it would be an automatic referral and it would go to uh, the relevant committee and then the process would, would proceed. It's an that initial, first. An initial determination. Exactly, and I, I think that makes sense to me. I don't know about the rest of you, but I, it's that first step, um, that first initial encounter and to what degree we can control that or make that part of an official process and make it as clear as possible. Any thoughts on that? I feel like I'm speaking a lot. Um, no. So, so there's either the one where we create a form yeah. that someone has to fill out or something, but or you can go back to I the know. proclamation process we've already sort of implemented right. um, and modify that slightly. That one is simply an email to the counselors, mm -hmm. town council at, mm -hmm. to find a counselor sponsor. And I, I heard Pat's concern about requiring a counselor sponsor puts for, for public way requests, potentially counselors in some awkward position. Um, but if they email the full council and it says, hey, I wanna change on this street in parking, that could then be deemed a public ways permanent request that then gets automatically referred to the appropriate committee for that initial vetting of do we want to spend more council and staff time on this. So instead of requiring essentially a counselor sponsor to bring it forward or the group petition process, it requires a committee sponsor <laughs> to, for, to get further action. Does that I mean, that, that's sort of what, and that committee would be, say, say we don't change committees and CRC gets it, they go to, it goes to CRC for a 10 minute conversation of, is this worth investigating? And that, and that then comes back to the council with a yes it is, no it's not, we haven't received enough or complaints about it. Yeah. But we're not, we, this, the initial conversation would not be getting into the specifics of is that the right response is, is, you know, think of Lincoln, they want that. They propose no parking. I don't necessarily see an initial conversation in a committee of being, well, is, the, is, is limited, you know, is banning parking the right response or should we really just limit it to eight to five or beyond that or not that specific. Yeah, that's not what I foresee an initial conversation as. It's, hey, they've brought up an important point. 
do we foresee parking on Lincoln to be bad enough or enough people complaining about it that staff time should be devoted to investigating it? That's the initial conversation. And then it would be within the council. It, it would stay, and I think that might address Alyssa's initial concern, is it would stay with the council to sort of make the decision as to whether we want to think about it more or not instead of it being staff making that initial decision. decide something has merit, then, then we contact DPW and we tell Joe Fridmore and we do this. And we help out. Yeah, to tell us. Uh, is that the purview? How, do, how would that, I'm not sure what my question is. Well, you're, you're describing two different ways in which a request could possibly get started. One is, and I think you're right, it's generally they send an email to Paul, or maybe some of them will send it to Mooring or both. Um, that's the usual way it probably happens. Then the question becomes, what do they do with it? Do they um, make the decision, well, this is, and I, I assume they could easily do this, this is a, falls within the purview of the, of the council, so then they would um, take, uh, they would alert the council, or they would alert the clerk, and, and, or, and the process would start to a referral, and da 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 But that puts the burden on Bockelman and Moore. And if they are busy, or they lose track of it, or they just decide this is frivolous, and they may be perfectly right, um, and they just ignore it, um, then, as you say, people, some, probably would then go to their counselors, hopefully, and say, I never heard. And then you would uh, reach out to Bachelman and, and say, what's going on? And now you would be involved, and eventually it would get referred again. Um, the question is whether uh, you want, uh, are we comfortable with the town's, uh, you know, the manager, um, being sort of the gatekeeper here um, and trust that, that he will uh, alert us in all appropriate circumstances. And, and then if he doesn't, uh, trust the process that anyone who really cares about this will then reach out to their council. Is that adequate? Um, yeah. Mandy's suggesting, if I'm understanding her, and I may not be, that maybe if we had a form or if we said to anyone that came to us, send an email to the town council, blah, blah, then you now have an email that everyone gets. Mm -hmm. And who's going to act on that? I mean, uh, so um, I guess I'm asking you. I mean, who? I mean, I would look at it and I would just go, well, that's not my district. Yeah. Or I'd look at it and go, that's my district. And I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot barge pole. So uh, what happens? <laughs> I guess that's why I'm saying an automatic referral to a committee for an initial vetting. Right. You know, so that it doesn't. So what triggers that is the email. Is the email. Yeah. And who actually makes the referral then? Um, is it uh, the president? Or, I mean, well, it automatic means the email would trigger the referral. So, so if there, if it goes, goes to, to CRC CSO, say, or whatever, yes. right? Uh, I send in a thing, okay. uh, and it's to Paul and to George, who I'm not going to elect next time because he's not helping me with this group project. I absolutely I would support you there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that automatically goes to CSO. Okay. What I'm saying is they would begin an initial vetting of... Yes, but that's the beginning yes, of the process. Yes, yes. And all the resident needs to do is, though most of them will not do this, they will reach out to the town manager mm -hmm. and or their counselor. But in theory, the process would be all you need to do is send uh, your request to this uh, email address. That's all you actually need to do. Um, th is that, yeah. Yes, I know it seems kind of crazy. That's um, all right. I mean, we're just, right today, you know, we're just if, crazy If they good. reach out to the manager and the manager actually does something and comes up with a proposal, which is sort of where Lincoln Avenue is, I think, right now. That's correct. Um, then looking at George's suggested process, I think we're at number four. It goes on an agenda similar to anything else that comes from the town staff. And goes on an agenda, and we decide whether 
you know, we get a presentation as to what it is and all of that and decide is it ready for public hearing or is it ready or is the better thing to refer to a council committee or back to the manager or right. say, no, we're not going to do this at all. You know, it starts that sort of process right around that number four um, and off. problem was when there was a suggestion of bringing it from the staff to the council no one the, the also issue was is that brought directly as a public hearing as required by the bylaws mm -hmm. or is there some other thing in there too and so this starting at four would indicate no there's an additional step it doesn't come direct if it if it's coming from someone there's an additional step but if a resident is not getting any you know, so Lincoln Avenue, they've worked with town staff, they've gotten that. Mm -hmm. Town staff is actually ready to present a proposal as far as I know. Right. That's, you start around number four. If they're not getting any action, um, you know, Pat indicated something in Echo Hill where no one really knows what the next step is, then an email to the council says, hey, the town, the staff, town don't staff don't know what to do. I'm reaching out to you. I want to change because I'm having problems. Then it goes to CRC. And that then gives town staff potentially guidance on what to do and, and that yes, yes or no, pursue this. Mm -hmm. So if we look at step one for a moment, a petitioner brings a public ways request to town hall, which is probably going to be Paul, which, which requires town council action, or a petitioner sends an email to, uh, what is it, town uh, council at amherst.ma.gov. Um, those are the two ways this can happen. The mm -hmm. town manager staff initiated proposal too. Uh, so so I don't third. like the word the. Good. That's right. I don't like the word petitioner. Yeah. Because that that just starts this pe group petition process, which I think we're trying to okay. potentially avoid. Would you prefer resident? I think it's just resident. a resident. Okay. Um, brings a public a way request. Process. It, and the yeah. requires town council action. The wording to me when you read it, I was like, oh wait, um, which. I think we need to be careful on what that means. Right. You know, they bring a public way request um, that falls under it, something like that would require town council action for implementation or something. Something that or that remains under the purview of the town council versus the town manager under our public ways policy. Something that says, well, they're not when they when they bring a request to the town manager, we're not required to act in the charter commission mm -hmm. group petition where we must have a vote. That we need to clarify that that's not what the requires town council action in this number means. It's we are the ultimate deciders of it. But they might make a request and we might say we're not voting on this. No, what I meant there was simply you, you that, meant that, that it's a request that falls under our our, our authority. Our authority. Yeah. Okay, I could put it that way, right? Right. That's the authority. Or the town manager brings a staff initiated proposal to the council, perhaps would be better. Thank you. Or, and then we're offering a third alternative, which is a resident sends an email to the town council. Um, all right, that's the first. I think it would be town council or the council. Yeah. Yeah. They're more likely than well. And then the counselor. But see, the counselor email the doesn't trigger anything. You could argue that the counselor email, the counselor would have a responsibility under whatever policy we make to trigger the process yes. by notifying right. potentially right. the chair of the relevant committee or the president or pick a person. Okay. The next step would then be it is referred automatically to X committee for um, you know, some preliminary determination? Just the third option, just when the resident emails the council. Because the other two um, would come to us without any... Um, right. would, would go to number four. Yeah. Right. Okay, so C would um, then be referred, all right. We're dropping the whole if the petitioner like that just gets taken out. Fair enough. Yeah. 
Um, next step could be just, I mean, again, I just don't understand the process. I hate to say it, but it's true. Um, the president, at their discretion, places the request on the council agenda. That's simply not, that is true, isn't it? So I think for A and B, that's what it is. Right, what right? about C? A and B was the right. town manager right. or the town right. staff initiated, right? right? Okay. Um. And for C, then, the president um, places the request on the council agenda? Mm. I mean, how do, this is just, yeah, I, I need help here. Yeah, no, I think, so, so go back to number one, you had three options. Right, A, B, C. The first option starts a process with town staff. Right. The second option, the staff has already initiated a process. Right, right. And the third option is the resident goes directly to the council, right? Right. So for the second option under number one, the staff initiated proposal, that goes directly to the president for request on the council, uh, mm -hmm. president places it on the agenda. The first option essentially potentially ends up as the second option, right? If the staff got the request and they did something with it, then it gets put. Then right. it's mm -hmm. under the second option. Um, the third option would be an automatic referral to the appropriate committee for an initial review an initial determination of further action. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I well, and then I think the further action review would come back to the council as a recommendation from the committee for what further action to take. Right. Um, so C goes you know, the resident initiated request to the council goes to a committee, the committee goes to, the, makes a recommendation to the council, it ends up on the agenda through the committee process. Mm -hmm. um, B, the staff initiated proposal ends up on the agenda through essentially the process president, we've been doing right, with the right, president's right, agenda. Right, um, right. A, sort of the, the brought to town hall, you know, right. to town hall right. okay. ends up to B that potentially ends up on the agenda or not. Essentially, A turns into either B or C. Right. They either get response or they don't, so they email the council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe we get rid of A. <laughs> um, or, or acknowledge that A turns into B and C. Or we simply not worry about them because this whole process is really driven by a resident uh, petition. So we would simply not even get into this whole issue of things that come from entirely different sources. It's really a question of, you know, when a resident brings a petition now, you know, <clears throat> right, um, maybe that's the simplest way, is just to take them out and just focus on the resident and, um, um, and that what they need to do um, to have their uh, concern addressed. Let me play with that, but that's one option. And you make this just strictly focused on the resident um, petition, the resident request. So one concern I have was maybe we need two different routes. Okay. Um, because I guess what I remember from the initial conversation in the council was there was concern that staff initiated proposals would go directly to a public hearing. Right, mm -hmm. and so I think that's that's where this council votes to authorize whether to you know to authorize either public hearing or referral you know type thing. Mm -hmm. Step four. Step four with the staff. The staff starts sort of at step four, so it doesn't start on the agenda as a public hearing. Potentially, I mean the Eversource ones do, but I guess that's by law, because there's there's some legal requirements that once they submit something within so many days, it has to have a public hearing. So I guess that's not really this type of thing. Right. Yeah, that's part of the issue here is whether what I'm trying to craft and what we're trying to craft as a committee is something specific to. I mean, what Lynn has asked for is a generic process for all public ways requests. That, in, that require town council action, which would include, obviously, these other things that we're talking about. 
Um, so I guess you could do a, you know, a footnote to number four that says this process shall not apply to those matters that under state law require the council to hold a public hearing within so many days or something like right. that, yeah. you know, right. <laughs> something right. like that. Right. Okay. It'd be nice if we could find a simple and then way in, to say it. Well, and we, then in parentheses, <laughs> like Eversource petitions or something. Right. No, I know, I know. Okay, um, we need to bring this to some conclusion. We have other work to do. Um, I don't think my dream of hammering this out is going to come close to fruition, but um, again, what I guess I could ask is for if you have any further thoughts or comments. Um, obviously, we do have an issue with a particular group of petitioners, and they are waiting our response, and what the president has asked is that we come up with a process before we respond to their petition, and we're now talking sometime in February because we don't meet again until the 29th. Um, so, <sighs> they're not in your district. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, would an option be to go to the president and say, here's where we're going with our process? Yeah, yeah. And that would mean that the next step with that particular request is for the council to vote on whether to authorize a public hearing, but we should do that now simply because the written process is going to take a couple meetings to hash out even if we've got an idea of what it looks like. It would be my preference to um, do that, but I don't know what the rest of the uh, committee feels. That, yeah. well, I guess what I'm saying is if we as a committee are have reached a consensus on what the potential process is going to look like despite not having an actual written process in writing and that that's going to take a couple meetings, could we as a committee um, recommend to the president to put on an agenda a vote on that one particular issue on whether to authorize a public hearing in conformance with the upcoming proposal of GOL without having to wait for that proposal to be in front of the council. But in, in conformance, wouldn't that recommendation come from CRC? CRC? Uh, it was a staff-initiated proposal at this point. The staff is ready to make a recommendation on what to do, I think. My understanding yeah. is the staff has a recommendation on what to do, so in in, when we were talking about one having three options, mm -hmm. they started with this falls on your staff initiative. They started with town complaining to town hall. Town hall actually took it up to B, and now it's staff initiated, so it would go to us to determine. To, so, so then it would fall under number four: vote to authorize a public hearing or not. That would be my personal preference, but I don't know. I mean, it sounds like Mandy obviously would agree to that. Any other thoughts? So do we need a formal vote on this? Or can we simply, by consensus, agree that, that I would uh, communicate to the president that um, we have the general outlines of a process, but it's gonna take us at least one or two more meetings to hammer it out. Um, but given that the outlines of the process, um, since this is a staff-initiated um, uh, proposal, um, it falls naturally to step four, and uh, she can go ahead and, and ask the council to authorize a public meeting. Is that, is that I mean, I, don't, I mean, I don't know how I put that in a motion. <laughs> I prefer to. I'm okay with consensus. Is that all right? Um, so you're asking me to do that, and I will do that. Um, and I, it's up to the president. She may. She I, when I did speak to her initially, she felt that strongly that there should be a process before we act. Um, I will make the case as strong as I can that that process is, has a fairly clear, rough shape, but if she's going to wait for us to get this hammered out to all the I's dotted and T's crossed, it, it's going to take too long. Okay. Thank you. Pat? Um, I have totally messed up the time um, of today's meeting. So oh. I'm supposed to be somewhere at 1. I just texted and see if that, um, they can wait till 1.30. But what I'm asking is, can we move to uh, 
the resolution on age 2810 next. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, um, we have two in front of us. Um, I think Black History Month probably could go pretty quickly. I think this second one. So yes, we could if that's all right. All right, so let's turn then to um, review resolution in support of H2810. I believe there are two uh, versions of this in your packet. Um, one is the petitioners. By the way, this is coming to us um, from both uh, Lynn Griesemer and from Pat. Yes, yeah, so you also can do that, thank you. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so we have um, their version, and then you have my very crude attempt to put it in a more formal uh, version I call it the GOL draft. Um, so, yeah, so you have the GOL draft mm -hmm. with the whereases. Now I had some technical issues with text here, but let's worry about that yeah. some other and day. I let's focus. Have, yeah. I, I had a change that I would like to make. Okay. Um, I, I think we can eliminate the first whereas and just start it with one that gives more education to make out the point. I don't think the first sentence should show that. I'm sorry, I have whereas climate change poses new threats. That's Democracy the first. Control, right, so right. You want to eliminate that? I think so, because I think in some ways it's embedded in the other, or it could come second. But I wouldn't want to keep that in there. Well, I'd be okay with eliminating it. I'm sorry, what? I'd be okay with eliminating the first one. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel necessary. The second one just sets out that. Yeah. Okay. So um, the first is to eliminate the first whereas. Um, the title, is that sufficient? A resolution in support of passing H period 2810 colon and then an act to promote. Uh, uh, I take any and all edits here. This is just fine your with chair winging it. Okay. So the first whereas we are already facing, uh, do you want to do go through it line, item by item? I think that's normally how we do it. Or do people feel comfortable with it? Well, I, I <laughs> be careful with that. Um, I have not read this in all detail, so I can't imagine you all have. So let's just do it line by line. Whereas we are already facing the impacts of climate change firsthand in our communities with our coastal cities and towns experiencing flood, record flooding and damage from more powerful storms and our inland communities facing extreme heat, drought and inland flooding that threaten small businesses stable municipal budgets, and the health of our most vulnerable citizens. Go ahead, Mandy, just wait. After in. drought, a comma. After um, drought. And I thought, and I thought the words our communities could be changed to the Commonwealth um, because we are not coastal community here in Amherst, so. Yeah, so, so, so I thought if we just said in the Commonwealth or in Massachusetts. Um, and where was that again, I'm sorry? Instead of the words, our communities, it, it was the first line of the whereas. First, you know, climate change firsthand in our communities. Anyone and change that too? Climate change firsthand in the Commonwealth or in Massachusetts, which do you prefer? Uh, Commonwealth is fine. All right. Think about the common good. <laughs> okay. It's so my only changes in that one. Whereas the Global Warming Solutions Act, capital T, I assume, of 2008 requires Massachusetts to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 20 percent, 25 percent in 2020, comma, and 80 percent by 2050. I thought that in 2020 should be by 2020. Yeah, it should be in, in 25 percent by yeah. 2020. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to cut 25 percent in one year. We can do it <laughs> because we're right. So that in becomes by. Oh. Yeah, and I, Evan just said the first buy before 25% goes, right? Yeah. yeah. So by 2020, okay. Whereas achieving these reductions will require dramatic shift from fossil fuels to clean energy, such as solar and wind. Whereas there is worldwide agreement among experts that putting a price on pollution to reflect the harmful impacts of climate change is the most cost-effective way to achieve the deep cuts in emissions that are necessary to protect our climate. And here's where we have a technical difficulty. This seems to have come from the internet. Uh, I don't know, but anyway, this is some, uh, some other document, and yeah. so I could not, right. I, I could not fix it. Um, I'm it's sure any 10-year-old could color. fix it. I got it fixed in my... All right, color. see, there you go, there you go. Same, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
So, are you doing your usual? I, I have it. I have it going. <laughs> Send it to you. Thank you. Whereas the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative (RGGI), a cap and trade carbon pricing system in which nine northeastern and mid-Atlantic states cooperate to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, has contributed to a 50 percent cut in power sector carbon pollution. Take away the bold. I don't know why it's Reggie. Okay. No bold. Thank you. Whereas California, several Canadian provinces, and much of Europe already have broad based carbon pollution fees. Whereas putting a price. How do you make it, you know, kind of. I'm sorry? You don't like the way I'm reading it? <laughs> <laughs> you could read it, Pat. I, I have no problem with that. Um, whereas putting a price on carbon pollution will level the playing field for clean energy solutions, encourage conservation, and help the state meet its legal requirement to reduce emissions. Should that be emissions? Yeah. I think so. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Whereas Massachusetts has a history of leadership on issues of national importance, from health care to public education, comma? I, said, I, think I changed the two to and, and marriage equality to clean water. You changed marriage to quality. No, no, water. so so it would read. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you! It would read from health care to public education and marriage equality, marriage equality to clean water. I, I I wasn't sure what to do with this sentence at all. <laughs> Too many You're not lists. The only one, but that's all right. This is the yeah, fun part of our job. Just take it out. You would remove the entire whereas, or just, I'm sorry? Um, me personally? Yeah. That's what we're asking. Oh. Not impersonally. I mean, I would take out the example. I would just say yeah, where just the Massachusetts example. has a history of leadership on issues yeah. of national importance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We should Leave step up for the whereas. Okay. Yeah. And then we. We well, need this the semicolon the, this and. This is a question for the sponsor now. Do we have a suggestion from the committee? You'll have to call Liz. <laughs> yes, it's fine. If she's not here, she's out of luck. Thank you. Uh, semicolon and at the end of that. There goes marriage equality. Okay. <laughs> and public education. <laughs> You'll pay a price for this in two years. We should step up by meaningfully addressing one of the most pressing challenges we've ever faced. Colon, oh, oh, climate oh, change. So yes. I, I thought it was a separate sentence because Massachusetts has a history of leadership on issues of national importance, whereas they have that. Be so colon and yeah. whereas. I, I just created a new whereas. Go for it, kid. That's fine. Um, <laughs> the sponsor is still good. Right. So then it was whereas we should step up by mean right. meaningfully so addressing. Second whereas. All yeah. Right. Why not? Once upon a time, we made a comment about keeping. These one sentence. Short. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess there's not grounds for rejection. <laughs> Whereas, if we are to counteract these threats, we need to, we need comprehensive funding that invests where it matters. Colon, reducing fossil fuel use in our buildings. Parenthesis to increase energy efficiencies and excess cost savings from heating and cooling with renewables. Close parenthesis, comma. Clean transportation, parenthesis, to electrify, electrify our bus fleets and increase access to regional mass transit, close parenthesis, and climate adaptation, parenthesis, to fund in in innovative solutions to local climate threats, close parenthesis, semicolon. Take out the parentheses, Reducing fossil fuels in our buildings. Just take out the parentheses yeah, and just have. Yeah, use in our buildings. Thank you. Thank you. And climate adaptation. Okay, is that fair enough? A bit shorter. I'm going to go on unless I hear an objection. Whereas H.2810, an act to promote green infrastructure and reduce carbon emissions. Should that be in quotation marks? Or so I just capitalized. The whole thing? No, the, prom the initial cap to promote green infrastructure, reduce carbon emissions, and I set it, set it out in commas. So a comma after 2810 and a comma, comma after okay. admissions. All right. 
is a key measure that will allow us to achieve this by putting a simple price on carbon pollution, comma, and allow us to fund clean transportation options like local electric charging stations and electrification of municipal vehicle fleets, parenthesis, for example, school buses, close parenthesis, comma, dedicate funding for local clean energy and climate adaption, comma, which includes microgrids, microgrids, modern seawall upgrades, comma, and planning that builds upon the state's existing MVP program, comma, and directing monies towards investments that reduce energy costs for municipalities and school districts. So, that makes sense. so I just spelled out MVP. You spelled out so MVP. I Making added it even longer. No, I didn't. I, I took the M and added the rest of ah. municipal. <laughs> so it's municipal, the V to vulnerabilities, and okay. the P essentially program. So Any thoughts on this <clears throat> somewhat lengthy paragraph? If the sponsor needs to speak up or forever hold her peace, fine. it's just fine. No. Keep going. Any committee members have anything to add besides the grumpy president? Okay. Yes? Not short shortness, <laughs> <or> brevity. <laughs> Not brevity. We're putting it's brevity in. We're going to change the charge. <laughs> Whereas age 2810 will have a net beneficial impact on statewide economic growth, parenthesis predicted to increase gross state product by. 600 million per year, comma, create over 10,000 local jobs, comma, and is one of the best climate policies when it comes to creating predictability for small businesses, period. Okay. We're on to the therefores. <laughs> all right, and now I, I just, I threw up my hands, so well, we, it's, what, it's all right. What you're taking on is this is an important step in beginning, I was gonna take out the suggestion to take out as well. All right, I'm glad involved. to hear that. Added the and. Yeah. Right. I just added one or two little yeah. things. Okay. You know, just to oh, yeah, make it supports. look like I looked at this. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Amherst Town Council hereby states, I didn't like that, but that's the best I could do. Can anyone do better? Now, therefore, be it resolved that. I'm sorry? Now, therefore, the Amherst Town Council Council's resolves. resolves? No, <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. Resolves its commitment no, to. <laughs> exactly. I know. So that I just had struggled with this part. It is committed to and so. Uh, I have no idea. So now, therefore, the Amherst Town Council. No. no. I think it's now, be therefore, it be it resolved. That the Amherst Town Council is committed to. And supports. And is committed to and supports. Is committed to or is committed to the passage of or supports the passage of? Yeah, that, yeah. Why do we need the that commitment? Committed to. Right. It says supports the passage oh, I of H2810. I know it's up to the sponsor. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Amherst Town Council Go with whatever is simpler. supports the passage of H2810. Yeah. Fair right. enough. An act to promote green infrastructure and reduce carbon emissions, comma, and we respectfully ask that Governor Charles Baker, Speaker of the House Robert DeLeo, comma, Senate President Karen Spilka, and the members of General Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Now I have a problem with this because Charlie Baker doesn't pass it. Enact. <laughs> he signs it. Enact. Enact. <laughs> um, could change it to enact. Um, Okay. Because he's part of the enacting. Yeah, all that of this is. is taking, this part is taken from the letter. Yeah, well, you should talk to the letter writer about the Constitution. Anyway, enact H2810 in the current legislative session, 2019-2020, period. And are we okay with two f resolves? Or do we I, I just bolded be it further resolved. Be it further resolved. And created a new paragraph. Thank I don't, you. Was the paragraph already yeah. created? Yes. Yeah. That the Amherst Town Council shall cause a copy of this resolution to be sent to Governor Charlie Baker, Speaker of the House Bob DeLeo, and Senate President Karen Spilka, and the members of the General Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with a copy to the Massachusetts Municipal Association, comma, communicating the Council's support of House Bill H-2810, period. I could have said that in a lot fewer words, but that's okay. Well, next time you write it. Absolutely not. <laughs> I just look at them. Any other further edits, changes, comments? I think we're ready for a motion. I move that we uh, 
declare. Clear, consistent, and actionable. We have a motion. And we have it seconded. I'll second. By Mandy. Thank you very much. <laughs> further discussion? I see no interest in further discussion. Call the question. All those in favor of the motion, signify by raising your right hand. No. And, and saying aye. <laughs> left hand. Aye. 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 All left opposed? Hand. Left hand. Left hand. Why left hand? Because the right hand's got a pen in it. All right, fine. <laughs> Raise your hand. The vote is, una vote is unanimous, 5 0. Thank you. Not for voting. And you just have to thank. raise something. We have a second resolution. Pat, you're free to go if you need to go. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I have to. No, I can't say it. I just want to make it quick. I have been having a recurrence of transfusions. Oh. And that's why I think I'm fine. Okay. Uh, getting back to remission, but that's why I've been missing things. Yeah. I apologize. No, you can't apologize for that, Pat. That's just hope it's good. He's not, he's not well. He's, hang, he's doing, he's really going above and beyond the call. He should be at home in bed. And that's, and maybe we, I should have sent him that. So. He'll give it to you if you'd like, but <laughs> you want to find out first? I'm glad you're between, between us and George. It's too late. Whatever he's got, I've got. So. Evan should have warned me earlier. Yes. He'll be fine. Yeah, I appreciate you staying in that care time. Black History Month Proclamation 2020. This is item number whatever. Um, four. It's out of order, but that's all right. Okay. Um, you're the sponsor, of this, right? I know. Yes, you are the sponsor, and the sponsor is present, at least for the moment. And she uh, says it's clear, concise, and actionable. She likes it. The sponsor likes it. Who are Mandy's edits? Mandy I has have three. Edits. Thank you, Just Mandy. three. Thank you. One of them in the second to last whereas needs the and at the end. That's the, correct. The semicolon and the now therefore I thought if we knew the time of the flag raising ceremony we should put the time in so flag raising ceremony will be held in front of town hall on Saturday February 1 2020 at I don't know what time it's at but we normally put the time in um, so okay. when we I think Pat's looking it up right now okay oh we need to figure out the time all right um, and then in the one two three four five sixth whereas there are two sentences and so I was hoping to just combine I think they can be combined into one whereas 2020 marks the 150th anniversary of the 15th amendment 1870 which gave the right to men of color to vote following the Civil War and it also marks the centennial of the 19th Amendment and the culmination of the women's suffrage movement, semicolon. So you, you'd put a comma after war and then the word and and uncapitalize the word it. That works. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Final small edit at the very now, therefore, I think that dash shouldn't be there in recognition of African Americans past and present. In our, I'm not sure what to do with punctuation there, actually. Oh, comma, past and present, instead in of dash. In community, comma. All right. no, in recognition of African Americans, comma, past and present, comma, in our community, or comma, that's what I would do. Get rid of the dash and just put a comma instead. All right. Okay. I'm not going to read through this line by line unless you insist. I trust you, Mindy. Thank you, I do too. Um, any other thoughts, suggestions, edits? Then I'm ready for a motion. I move to declare the Black History Month Proclamation 2020 clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of the motion as presented, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. Aye. Okay, is that? Is that what it is? Okay, thank you. So it's 4 0 with one absent. Um, all right. We have two sets of minutes, and um, thank you to our clerk for getting them to us. And um, if you would take a moment and just a moment to look them over, I have looked them over. Um, I had one very small change to make in one of them, but let's start with December. Fourth, first, and I'll give you a moment to look at it. 
you have any changes or concerns. Oh, that they should be there. Hopefully I did not screw up, but that's possible. Oh, they're in draft minutes. Draft, no, draft minutes have September. Yeah, I didn't see it in draft minutes. Uh, that's possible that I failed to put them in. Online, GOL? In the packet. They're not there. I'm sorry. they're in the online side. When you're satisfied, just gesture or so Evan is satisfied. Steve, I don't write. Uh, Mandy, how are you doing? I'm good. Okay. Um, I was going to do these both together. So um, the second set is uh, December 18th. I do have one change I would propose under item four, um, consider possible procedures for how to handle public ways requests which require town council approval. I think we should just say postponed or something just so someone understands that we didn't deal with it. At the moment, it just is the topic, but no action, and we didn't deal with it. So I would insert postpone there. Um, but again, take a moment, look it over. Anyone else? Anyone? Yeah. Everyone's happy? Yeah. Can we adopt these then by consensus? That's what we did last time? Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. So the minutes of both December 4th and 
December 18th are accepted by the committee by consensus. Um, last item we have here, we do not have public presence, so there is no public comment, um, is future agenda items. Um, you've given me some things to do for the next meeting. I wanted to talk very briefly about other possible um, topics. One has to do with the public ways policy on flag raisings, commemorative flags. That's something that uh, I could look into because I have done some work on that. And I do have a couple of weeks before school starts again <laughs> where I could put my mind to that. But if it's not that important, I can let it sit. Um, but that's one item. Um, I also noted uh, Steve's suggestion about alternate and associate members. That's something that is somewhat dear to my heart, but I don't know if that's something he'd like us to take up or if he's ready to I proceed. I'm, I'm sorry? I'm yeah, well, it, it was, yeah. Is that something, are, are you ready for that or no? No. No, okay, fine. Are there other items that you would like us to consider uh, putting on the agenda for next month? We will continue to deal with the uh, public ways request. Um, and the restructuring will keep us more than busy? Yeah. Fine, fair enough. I, That'll okay. take a while. All right, good. So I have nothing further. There's no new business unanticipated. Um, so I'm prepared to adjourn this meeting at 1.16. All right, thank you. Thank you.